Hello everyone, this is Justin Croxon from Zon Commerce talking to you about everything that is e-commerce with a focus on Amazon FBA selling, particularly in the global sense. Um, yeah, I thought it was important to kind of walk people through a, a tool that I think if you're uh, an FBA seller, if you're selling on Amazon um, and you, you have not used the revenue calculator, I can't imagine there's you know a lot of people that haven't who do sell on Amazon. But even those that do sell on Amazon and utilize this calculator, they're not really going through the process of figuring out exactly how to understand the numbers of their business. So you know, let's say you go through the process, you've done some global research, you've kind of picked the markets, quote unquote, or the global markets that you want to focus on. So maybe you decide that it's not just the United States, you also want to focus on the UK, you might want to also focus on uh, Japan. But for the purposes of this particular exercise, we're going to focus on the United States to show you the simplicity of this tool because it really is the same tool utilized throughout all the different markets. So once you've picked your market, you pick your product, you do some product research, and a lot of times when you're doing that product research, you're trying to get a sense of, all right, what are my competitors doing? You know, What are the costs associated with how they're selling online? What are those individual FBA fees? What's the item price itself? What's the order handling? You know how. You know, what's going to be my overall net profit when it's all said and done? And understanding that number is so critical at this stage. And and a lot of people don't get that once they get to this part. They'll say, all right, you know, my my price that I want to price this at at the lowest would be let's say fifteen bucks. And then they you know you know cut out all the FBA fees, all the shipping and handling from Amazon. And they, they see sort of the, the gross profit, but they don't factor in the, the unit price or the shipping on a per unit basis. Um, and then they also don't factor in the promotions and all those other things. So I thought it was important to walk people through just this overall process of how to really get to the actual number of what you would make for a particular product. Now, in the past, what I've done is I've talked a lot about the travel industry. We don't have any travel products right now. We may in the future, I haven't quite decided. Um, but I figured this might be an easy one because a lot of people you know, love the selfie stick, uh, particularly a lot of people overseas for, for that matter. So that's actually a pretty good niche um, if anyone wanted to go into that area. But when we look at the selfie stick, I mean, I kind of did some preliminary research and I went on here and I said, all right, the selfie stick, uh, this guy has close to 3,000, I mean, they practically have 3,000 reviews, right? So let's say 3,000 reviews, um, and they're selling at a price of $17.25. That's, um, that's probably on the high end because they do have 3,000 reviews. They're, they're a pretty big brand, I would assume, here. Um, but then you have other folks that sell them for $9.99. You have other folks that sell them for $5.10. I would probably throw that's a little bit more of an outlier. Liar. I would say probably the, the 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 number that you should probably look at would be twelve bucks. I'd say anywhere from ten to twelve bucks is probably the way you want to go. So I might just want to pick a different product. I'm going to pick this product right here, um, the selfie stick iPal, and I'm going to come down here. I'm going to pull the ASIN number. And for those who don't know, the ASIN is the individual identifying number that is assigned to every single product on Amazon. Gives you all the information on that particular product. And so when we pull that information and we go back over here to the FBA Amazon calculator, we want to try a different product. So it says find your product on Amazon.com. And again, just to let you know, you can do this, this type of global product research, not just in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Germany, UK, you name it, this tool uh, essentially uh, can be utilized throughout all those different markets which is great so we do the search and we say okay we know that the price is nine dollars and ninety eight cents you're not fulfilling it as a reminder you are not fulfilling it yourself you're getting Amazon to fulfill it but for the purposes we're going to still put that number in there so you can at least see the differences in the in the various prices and the cost that's associated with this item so let's work this work our way down from here. So we're not even going to worry about your fulfillment. Just on Amazon fulfillment, you have your price at nine dollars and ninety eight cents. So your revenue subtotal is nine dollars and ninety eight cents. Then the minimum cost, or I guess the minimum 
I guess referral fee that Amazon would charge on, on a product is I believe 99 cents. In this case, they charge 15% for all sales that you make. So if you get if you have a $20 item, they're going to charge you three bucks. If you have a $10 item, they're going to charge you a dollar fifty. If you have a if you're doing a promotion, they're going to charge you one dollar or ninety-nine cents because promotions aren't free. They do charge a little something for selling the actual item itself. So you have the dollar fifty there, right? And then you work your way down here and you say, okay, order handling. On average here in the United States, it's going to cost you about a, a buck. Picking and packing, that's them actually, you know, the individuals or the machines that they're using is taking the actual product itself. They're picking it out of the inventory and they're packing it for you. That's also a dollar four cents. Then you have the weight handling. I believe um, the weight handling in the United States is the best out of all countries all around the world that Amazon does business in. Um, so you have weight handling, which is at 63 cents, which is actually really, really good. And then finally, you kind of work your way down here. I wouldn't worry so much about inbound shipping. That's really not a number you have to worry about. But if you want to, if, let's say, for example, if you wanted to ship the, the product yourself to Amazon, you could factor that in. But I just do that on the, on the back end. I don't even worry about putting those numbers in here. So you have inbound, you have 30-day storage. I wouldn't worry about that. This 30-day storage is incredibly low so you know that's not even that's pretty marginal as far as I'm concerned prep service don't even worry about that that's not something that you have to be provided you have to worry about unless you are getting Amazon to prep the items for you meaning you are having them put the put the actual um, F in SKUs on each individual unit and I believe that's 20 cents but for the sake and purposes of this, we're going to assume that we're actually doing the prep service ourselves or our supplier is doing the prep service um, for us. And so the fulfillment subtotal cost ends up being about $2.67. If you factor that into the overall cost of the $150 plus the $267, that gives you $4.17 is what it costs you, is the money that you're giving to Amazon for each sale that they make on your behalf on their platform and so finally the margin impact the final number that that you're going to get from Amazon that they, this is the number five dollars and eighty one cents is what they're going to transfer into your account when it's all said and done but you have to remember that it does not stop there yeah you have that five dollars and eighty one cents but obviously we have to factor in our our own costs associated with that item so I don't know what the selfie stick costs. I have not done any research or, or contacted any suppliers. But for the, for the purposes of this one, let's assume that the selfie stick costs you about $2.50. I think that's a pretty fair, a pretty fair number. So $2.50, $5.81, which is the uh, initial profit margin or gross profit margin, minus $2.50 gives you $3.31 is what you would make on each item. Now, just because that number is $3.31, there's a number of people who that are okay with just making $3.31 for each item that they sell on Amazon. They're okay with it because they know that they can, you know, take advantage of, you know, high volume. There might be a lot of people that are always in the market shopping around looking for selfie sticks. So they don't, they're not so much concerned about, oh, you know, I'm not making the type of margins that I want. I'm not making a, you know, let's say, uh, you know, a $5 margin or $6 margin. I'm making a $3.31 margin because I know that I can sell, let's say, you know, 20 a day or something like that. But in my judgment, I do believe that anything above 40% is a good margin. 35% is a good average margin. Anything below 30% is, uh, it's okay, but you wanna be doing some pretty decent volume. But it really depends on the comfort level of the individual seller, that individual that wants to sell that item at that price point. Now, don't forget, you, it doesn't have to be at the $9.98 mark. Let's say you're able to bump that up to $12.98, then you know, you're in business. You're, you're, you're making close to $8.36 minus the $2.50, and your margins are, are a lot better. 
But I would just want to show you real quick. So, you know, let's say we did keep it at the nine dollars and ninety eight cent mark, and we're still making the it, when it's all said and done after shipping cost, after unit cost, everything that that's on a charge to you on a per unit basis by your supplier, after all costs is three dollars and thirty one cents. Take that three dollars and thirty one cents and divide that back into your nine dollars and ninety eight cent number. That gives you a thirty three percent profit margin. So in my judgment, I don't. I really don't think that's a bad number. I really don't. I think that's okay. Um, I think anything between thirty to forty percent is 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 a good average. Anything above forty percent is great, and that's what you should try to strive for. Anything below that, mm, it's getting a little dicey, you know, because you also have to factor in advertising costs that we usually don't factor in at this stage of the game because it's so variable. Um, but you know, these are the things that you want to think about when you're using the FBA calculator. I think personally, it's the best tool that you can use to really get a true sense of what your actual costs are going to be um, when it's all said and done. Um, sometimes you may be look doing product research and you may decide that you want to bundle something else with that. You know, you're going to have to factor that in. There's going to be an additional weight associated with that item. Um, there probably will be additional costs, but you also might be able to charge a little bit more um, for that particular item. But using the FBA calculator is is really going to make certain that you know your numbers to the T. You know exactly what your costs are and there's no questions on what it's going to cost you and how much money is going to be uh, put back into your account um, uh, every two weeks, which essentially that is which is essentially the time frame that uh, Amazon goes through. Um, they essentially make transfers on a bi every biweekly basis, essentially. So this was just an exercise. I just wanted to show everyone how to use this tool. It's very very powerful. It's free. You do not have to pay for it if you are an F FBA Amazon seller or if you are a merchant seller. Um, I would say it would behoove you to know this tool inside and out um, and to utilize it uh, as often as you possibly can so you know with a certain level of clarity exactly what your all in profit margin is going to be. So for this selfie stick, assuming that we're selling it at $2.50, or not $2.50, but it's costing us, including unit cost and shipping costs from China or wherever we're sourcing it from is going to, you know, cost us two dollars and fifty cents minus the, you know, the uh, four dollars and seventeen cents. We're making the three dollars and something. I think it was like three dollars and thirty one, or something to that effect, which comes out to be thirty three percent profit margin. So use this tool as often as you can. Get comfortable with it. It's going to be your best friend. And um, I hope this was helpful. I'm looking forward to any questions you may have on how to utilize this tool. Thanks so much. Take care.